Hello, and welcome to Quick Charge. I'm Mikey G, and it's Saturday, June 17th. Tesla has filed for a patent on a new steer-by-wire system. A steer-by-wire system eliminates the use of mechanical linkages in a steering system, and instead it relies on electrical or electromechanical systems for steering. Back in 2020, Electric reported that Tesla was building a new team in Austin with the goal of developing a new steer-by-wire system. And a year later, Elon Musk confirmed that Tesla is indeed working on just that. But now, we learn that Tesla has filed for a patent. Many markets still require mechanical linkages in steering systems in order for the vehicle to be road legal, and in the disclosure, Tesla claims that its design allows for redundancy without having a mechanical steering system as a backup. Analysts are trying to estimate the value of Tesla's supercharger network as the North American charging standard connector becomes the actual standard and could widen Tesla's charging lead. One of the top Tesla analysts believed that it could be worth more than $100 billion. Morgan Stanley analyst Adam Jonas believes that in the long term, Tesla could produce and store its own solar electricity to power its superchargers. Based on that assumption, they built a few scenarios. The scenario listed as the reasonable case assumes 10% EV miles penetration, 50% Tesla's share of supercharging, and 30% net operating profits after tax margin to lead, and a potential net present value of $3 per share for the business. Another scenario called dominant case presents a value of $33 per share, climbing up to $100 billion considering all Tesla shares. Now monopoly case is also included, which isn't terribly likely, but that scenario comes out to over double at $78 per share. Tesla has issued a new voluntary recall on the Tesla semi-truck in form of software update that ensures that the side door warning system is working properly. Now the recall really isn't a big deal, but what it does tell us is a little bit about the Tesla semi-production. That recall covered vehicles produced between November 30th and February 28th, a total of 35 vehicles. That roughly matches the 36 vehicles that Tesla's first customer, PepsiCo, and its subsidiary Frito-Lay were said to be deploying. On Wednesday, we reported on the latest update on semi-production and noted that the delivery volume was still a big question. We heard about deliveries to Pepsi and Frito, but other than that, we haven't heard a whole lot of other clients. Tesla does reportedly have a line capable of producing five semis per week, and in its last quarterly report, it said that this is the pilot production line for semi, but didn't specify any numbers. We're going to be watching this with bated breath. Tesla has confirmed that it now has installed 500,000 power walls worldwide, and it's growing fast. In May of 2020, Tesla confirmed that it installed its first 100,000 power walls, which took the company almost four years. A year later, in May, they reached 200,000, and now they've reached 500,000. Last year, we learned that Tesla has the capacity to produce 6,500 power walls per week at Gigafactory Nevada. This isn't likely sustainable due to battery supply constraints, but it's enough to enable the deployment of 250,000 power walls in about a year and a half. We recently reported that Tesla is now preparing to launch the next version of its home battery pack called the Powerwall 3. This one has higher capacity, among other improvements. Stellantis plans to release an affordable electric vehicle next year to the tune of 25,000 euros. The low-cost electric car will be released by Citroën, and it's called the E-C3, to be exact. It'll carry over 300 kilometers of range. This small car will compete against the Chinese-made Dacia Spring, the upcoming Renault 5 EV, and the Volkswagen ID2 All. The new Citroën City car will be built in Slovakia and launched early next year. The French automaker also plans a new electric SUV, which is codenamed CR3, and this will replace the current C5 Aircross. Stellantis CEO confirmed that it would be 100% electric and likely not offered in any other variant. Rivian is gearing up to accelerate production of its first electric SUV, the Rivian R1S. Rivian CFO Claire McDonough explains during an interview with Deutsche Bank that the company is seeing strong demand despite the economic environment. Rivian is seeing higher demand for the R1S with about 70% of the company's pre-orders, so the company is beginning to prioritize production to resolve the imbalance. The company expects few weeks of downtime next year as it introduces new technology to improve efficiency 
and cut costs, including its next-generation network architecture, the LFP battery tech, high nickel batteries, and simplified manufacturing processes. The Volkswagen Group hit a milestone revealing 1 million electric vehicles have been produced on its MEB platform. Volkswagen foresaw the auto industry's transition to fully electric vehicles back in 2015, although they didn't really fully commit to it quite yet at that time, and they released their dedicated platform back in 2018. The platform serves as a base for the ID3, the ID4, the ID5, the ID6 in China, and it will power the upcoming flagship ID7 sedan. Aside from other Volkswagen brands, the platform also underpins other vehicles, such as current Ford electric vehicles. The automaker says that it achieved a milestone with five brands, including Volkswagen, Audi, Cupra, Skoda, and Volkswagen Commercial. Volkswagen is already working on developing the platform further with their next generation MEB+. Plus. This will use advanced batteries, as they call it, to enable over 430 miles of range and faster charging times. Nikola Corporation has shared a business update that includes plans for decreasing cash and a reorganizing of its workforce. And I think we know what that means. The EV startup is prioritizing North American market right now as it looks to lean down and optimize to ensure the continued production of its zero emission trucks. We've seen the company restructure multiple times in the past in order to optimize. And this time, Nikola Corporation expects to decrease its cash usage to under $400 million annually by 2024. All eyes will be on Nikola's next quarterly report to see how it works. Japan is awarding nearly 120 billion yen, which amounts to $847 million, to fuel Toyota's new revealed EV battery tech strategy. For Toyota's sake, this will hopefully make up for lost time. One of the biggest revelations from Toyota was that their tech roadmap suggested future Toyota EVs will achieve over 600 to 700 miles of range by 2028, this with several new EV battery types. Toyota also claims it has, quote, discovered a technological breakthrough concerning solid-state batteries. By 2027 to 28, the automaker plans to produce solid-state batteries resulting in 20% more range and a 10-minute or less charge time. By 2027, Toyota intends to have two next-generation batteries in production. In today's community comment found on YouTube, Boots Whitlock says, with a lack of physical buttons and functions hidden in software decision trees, I use my Model Y voice functions a lot. You know, that's a pretty good point. There is an unachievable balance between physical buttons, touchscreen functions, touch buttons, and haptic touch buttons that may never be reached. Cars like the Toyota BZ4X lean toward physical buttons. Cars like the Hyundai and Nissan try to straddle the middle. And of course, Tesla throws it all inside the tablet. I really don't know where the sweet spot is, but I think there will be an age difference in the buyers, especially in the future. Thanks for watching Quick Charge by Electrek. I'm Mikey G, and I hope you have a great day.